reach and to slowly build your following. So on um, on the day that I took this screenshot, I had 1,309 um, connections, and that's in the red circle, which translates or gets me connected to 14 million 500 people. So I am um, so the uh, let's see. So uh, after 14 million 546. So after adding two people, there here's my point. I lost my point. I am let's see. I added two people and actually connected me to 12,000 additional people. So adding two people isn't just two people. It's adding two people and their network and their network. So the network works like it's two points out. Uh, you know Kevin Bacon and his six degrees of separation. This helps you eliminate, you know, three of those those connections and um, those six or three degrees, right? So keep adding people. The other point I wanted to show you, and this is my homepage. So I posted something that was mildly interesting to people. And basically, the dots in the inner circle are 156 views total. But the, the, the inner circle is my network. The outer circle is second degrees. <laughs> That's probably a great idea. However, the, the um, let's see. Hold, please. I'm going to um, type a note to my assistant, who is way more than an assistant. Okay, so um, with another. Okay, so let's see. So, okay, so what we're looking at is 156 views and two likes. Now, the coolest part about that is, is that I reached 156 people. And um, the two views, the two people who liked it, awesome. But the reality is, how long would it take for me to email 156 people? And are those people that I'm directly connected with? No, they're actually connections of other people. Somebody saw it, somebody liked it. Two people who liked it actually extended my reach. And this is the point of LinkedIn, is how do you extend the reach, right? With easy um, access to just keep, uh, keep adding people and make sure that your messaging is uh, powerful. So nuts and bolts. Let's talk about where does your eye go first? What's the most important thing about this? And I'm not right. I'm not writing this just because or I didn't put this on here just so you could look at my picture. But the reality is, my picture is your first point of eye, eye contact, right? So I chose a welcoming face. I chose a smiling face, a happy face. I am sick to death of this this picture. It's everywhere. But I was at a networking event the other day, and this um, this guy said, "You look very familiar." So. Um, I know that because my picture is uh, casual and intimate, I know that it is, um, um, Sherry, we don't hear your dog barking, so that's perfect. So um, uh, let's see, everybody is muted. So let's see, well, okay, so my point is my picture, familiar, repetitive, over and over, I'm sick of it, but it's not for me. It's for other people to get more familiar with me. And my LinkedIn profile helps me get familiar with other people and helps them get familiar with me. So um, basically, people hire people they know, like, and trust. They, um, they want to get to know people, and they get, through, get to know people through LinkedIn slowly and systematically and with the intention of actually putting your, your brand, your messaging, your best foot forward, right? So, let's see. Okay, so first eye, your eye goes first to the picture. Make sure you have a good picture. 
not a picture of you as a tiny dot. This is a picture of me. It was actually a full-size picture of me, but it is, I cropped it so that it was just my face. My photographer had me laughing and she was, she was talking about dating and which always makes me laugh. What talk about my dating. Anyway, longer. Next point. So nuts and bolts, your title, your tagline, right? My name is big and bold, but this is what shows up every time I post something. Anytime somebody does a search for coach, anytime somebody does a search for executive coach, something that is in my keyword search and my name comes up, they see organizational leadership business performance coach, which is a mouthful. And I, I need to change that because it needs to be one breath, right? So it needs to be business performance coach or it needs to be professional coach and then talk about my brand, my tagline, which is behavioral science and group dynamics, dynamics specialist, which is so um okay so uh let's see business performance coach so it, it needs to be something that actually adds to your brand it's not i am an accountant that's not enough it doesn't tell anybody anything about your ooey goodness right so really make sure you spend some time on this the tagline right okay so now before you do anything Let's talk about the security settings and um, and where to find them. Okay, so you go up, you go up to the upper right hand corner where you see your picture, the red line, the red arrow, and the red circle. Then you go down and you click on that, and you'll find your settings. Right. Um, and by the way, this is all in the free free side of LinkedIn. Um, and then you go to policy. Uh, I'm sorry, privacy and settings, and you review. Okay, so now the red box will be, the, or the red arrow on the red circle, not the red box. It says, turn off on your activity broadcasts. Naturally, it's set to on. But while you're making changes, you don't want people to congratulate you on a new job if you don't have a new job. While you are, um, while you are uh, working through, you're changing your profile, you want to make sure that that's private before you want to um, actually make it public because you're not if you especially if you're not changing what you're doing but you're actually changing details about what you're doing so the first part the, the red one is turn on a when you press that you'll get the blue box right check that uncheck that and then make all the changes you want and then save it save it and then make all the changes you want and then go back to re um, open it so that people can see what you're up to and get to know you slowly over time, which is a trust builder. Okay, so before you start writing, um, you have to kind of think through, okay, what do I want? What's my goal in LinkedIn? Is it to get, get more contacts? Is it to get certain contacts? Remember how I wrote group dynamics? Remember how I wrote behavioral scientist? That's because I'm si sort of sciencey nerdy. I read all those crazy books that nobody else wants to, right? Think feature-based. Don't think, what did I get? Think, what do I want? So then you want to do, who are you talking to? Picture them. Picture them while writing. So basically, you're having a conversation with them. What do you want them to know? What do you want them to What do you want them to do, right? What's your call to action? Now, not that you're going to put this overtly, but you want to make sure that you firmly have that. Is it you want a job? You want to find teaching positions? Do you want to find a, a new consulting gigs? Are you looking for people to support you in your what, right? Identify your with them. What's in it for me? So that's age-old advertising. So you're not talking for me, I'm talking about it for you, right? Like if you want, this whole program is something for you. It's not for me. I already know this, right? But make sure, when I wrote this, I thought, well, what, what was important to me that I think they want to know, right? So then think about what your style is and how does it match your target? Now remember, being casual, being formal, being enthusiastic, whatever matches your brand, 
you're going to attract the right people about who you're talking to. And if there's a disconnect between your style and who you're talking to, think about how you can get those closer together, right? And what does your brand sound like? Is it a casual tone? Is it edgy? Do you use swear words? I don't think you can use swear words on LinkedIn. But make sure that your brand sounds like um, you, right? Make sure that your brand and how you're writing matches who you are. Now I need to make sure that I've make, covered all my very valuable points. Um, so actively branding yourself this way will, will actually preempt somebody else branding you in their mind, right? This is who you are. You're securely forming who you are, right? Okay, so so identifying your brand. Now, disregard the colors on this because this needs to change. But um, your inherent talent, you were given talents when you were born, right? Remember the lines you stood in? So that's a big part of your brand. Like, what are you naturally good at, right? What do you, what's easy for you? So you think about what's easy for you and what, what you're naturally good at. And then you think about your history. So where have you been? Think about all the different places you've been. What kinds of experiences have you had? What successes have you had? Right? And then think about um, what you did to be successful there. Think also about your miserable family, failing miserably, failing big and bold. What did you learn from that? What did you improve because of those failure points? Right? And then your own personality. Like, I cannot be formal. I cannot, well, I can, I can dress up and, you know, do the Barbie doll thing, but it's not my preference. I am casual, I'm comfortable, I'm accessible. That's just who I am. I can't, I can't be that sustainably. I can do it for a night or a weekend. Yeah. Um, and then you want to add that combo to your dreams, your vision, and your goal. What are your goals? That all of that picture equals your brand identity, right? So your brand is not your logo. Your brand is not the company that employs you. Your brand is not your family's brand or your friend's brand. You might get clues as to who you are by looking at the five people around you and finding out what, what are their attributes because those are generally yours, the ones that you're closest to. And by the way, if they don't match your brand, you might have to do something about that. But that's a whole different webinar. Okay, so questions to identify your brand. I'll make sure that I'm up to date with my points. I hate to miss any of my really valuable points. Um, okay, so think about what activities, like if you, if you think, oh, okay, I want to really do a deep dive on my brand. What, what would you do? What projects, activities, work aspects of your job would, are you excited about and you don't need prompting? Right? What do you do first? What is your secret weapon? And you need to sit with a piece of paper and think about these. Or, you know, if you're electronically motivated, then sit somewhere with a laptop or your just some way to make notes. And just let it let it flow to you. What assignments would you volunteer to do today? What what volunteer work do you do that you really enjoy? What can't you stop yourself from doing, right? Okay, so think, and this is part of the think, you, think of a time when you failed miserably. There is always something really good that comes of that. Sometimes it takes a little longer than others, but what did you learn about yourself from that? Right? What, do you, what can't you stop from doing and, and you keep doing it? Like for me, I say things that probably, um, you know, people don't necessarily want to hear. I also used to get in trouble as a kid. I'm skipping to my next point, but I got in trouble as a kid for saying what was like the elephant in the room, I called it. And <clears throat> I, I, I would definitely be in trouble for that. But that's actually what people pay me for now because I can identify what's really going on. I see patterns, I see processes, I see the ooey goodness in people, and I see the potential, which makes me so happy. Um, so people come to me to solve what problem? Right? People come to me when they don't remember what they're good at. 
I love doing that. Um, let's see, what work do you get lost in? Right, so these are questions you ask yourself to figure out what is your brand. So what do you get lost in? What do you stand for? What values do you defend? Completely missed that line. What makes you really mad? What injustice do you just like think? <laughs> Again, right? What drives you? And I want to make sure that you do not do a comparative. Because comparing me to another coach, there's so many coaches out there. We're all different. We all have our particular brand. I have my history in entertainment, marketing, advertising. But does that, does that mean that I'm the same as Martha Beck? No. I would love to be Martha, Martha Beck. But she has a history in psychology. She's a huge super scientist. I love her work because it's based in science. Would you go to ask for the same thing? Maybe not, right? Mother Teresa, she's a giver. She likes to help people. We're doing, we're, you know, who is like her? No one. She could only be her. I can only be me, right? So don't compare yourself to others when you're doing this process. Just think, what, what is it I love, right? And beware that your superpower it's not a superpower to you. Other people need your superpower. I can organize anything. So does that mean that I don't need somebody else to help me organize? I need to have somebody help to stay help me stay on task. But I it's it's I'm amazingly helpful to other people to help them get organized or them see them to see what their ooey goodness is. So identify your superpowers by asking these questions. What do people come and ask you for? If you watch it, you'll see that it, this, this will come to you. And it's super fun to find out. Okay, so you develop your hook line. Remember that tagline that I had something way too long and cumbersome? But it's a, a social scientist, behavioral scientist, and social dy uh, group dynamics specialist. Okay, so think different. Apple, Snap, Crackle, Pop, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Just do it, Nike. So they're simple, they're breathable, but they make you feel differently on each one. So think of a line, and this is after you've got your brand, think of a line that works with your brand. And this is like the advanced version. So don't worry about this yet. Okay, writing points. And what I want everyone to do right now is I want everyone to stand up and take a moment. I'm standing up too, so I might get a little further away from the microphone. And I want you to stand up and I want you to put your feet. Is everybody standing? I can see you, you know. So um, I can't really, but I want you to do this. So I want you to take your take stand up and kind of jump up and down on the balls of your feet and get yourself a nice solid stance, right? Some people call this a, a tennis stance, so you're ready for anything, right? Okay, so take the take your hands, make a fist, put them on your your um, hips like a superpower, superhero. Da, da, da. Okay, and put your shoulders back and breathe in deep. How do you feel? Powerful, right? Yeah. So I want you to do this right before you think about writing because you are going to come from such a place of power. All right, now you can sit down. I, can, I know you all did this. All right, so writing points. This is an eye chart, but it's good information. And it's, it's things that you need to think about while you're writing. So your headline, 55 characters or less. I'm pretty sure my headline is not 55 characters or less. So I need to change that. The summary, short sentence, sentences, 23 words or less in one breath. That is, you don't need long, complex sentences, right? First person, like they stopped by and you want to welcome them. Write in the first person the summary, which is the same as the line above it. So use keywords in the summary and get technical in the list of skills. And 
in a minute we're going to go to um, go back to my um, my profile and I'll show you what that means. Um, so bullet point anything that might be easily consumed as a list might be better consumed as a list, right? So if you have um, three or four different talents that you want to highlight or experiences that you want to highlight or um, something that you want them to know and walk away with, they'll see it much more easily in a list with bullet points. And then um, any, any block of copy is not read how you think it's going to be read. People don't take as much time. What they'll read is in is C-shape reading. So they'll read the top and then they'll read the, the first part of the, the sentence and then they'll read um, the end. So it's really the middle that's just completely forgotten. So if you have something really critical, put it in the first line. And something that's secondarily critical, put it in the last line. Right? So make sure that you put the important parts in the middle, or in the top, in the bottom. Not the middle. Not the middle. All right. So, um, so utilize a skills area for searchable terms, right? When you and I believe keywords are absolutely part of it, right? So you still want to use keywords. Yes, Google's changing their their um, algorithm algorithms. But frankly, LinkedIn and Google are super friends. So make sure that you have a, an area of skills that you want to be recognized for. And do not put anything in there that's not. Where is that? Don't put anything in there you don't want to be um, hired for. Right? Do not lie. Now you'll hear my dog. Do not lie unless your brand is that of a liar, which I would guess you're not because you don't really get very far doing that. But just, you know, you are enough. You, as is, are enough. Oh, here it is. Lose anything that tells a contraindicating story. Meaning, specific skills that do not add to your story. Something that is like Microsoft Office. So if you've been in corporate, you know Microsoft Office. You had to. If, if you want to put anything that you're an Excel expert or you write... PowerPoints like you do a brief, right? So then you want to make sure you check the negativity factor. How, are you as positive as you could be? Are you talking about yourself the way your aunt would, right? So you want to make sure that you are absolutely glowingly positive. And this is a part where if you can't say anything nice, then make it shorter, right? <laughs> Less is more. Make it consumable, scalable, easy to read. Um, and then make sure when you're writing your profile, get recommendations, which are different from endorsements. You'll have to ask for these, right? And then um, anybody who has, get 10, 10 absolute minimum, 10, work on it, get it, right? So the, um, the, um, if you've been in business for a while, like me, 30 years, I should be able to find 10 people who would say nice things about me. Or I'm in trouble, right? That's a whole different aspect. The, um, the next line, the accessible, is um, be accessible. That should be a separate bullet point. Be accessible. Let people find you. Put it on your social media or websites. Let them find out who you are. Let them get to know more about you. And then there's a section at the bottom of the profile that says, you know, it's about personal interest. Fill it up. Get yourself a personality in there, right? Put something interesting about you. Let people know how they can land on you, meaning what they get when, when they engage with you. I'm a huge uh, Green Bay Packer fan. I, I think that's in there. If it's not, it should be. Because, quite frankly, it's something that consumes me in the fall. It's fun, right? Okay, so write personal interest in the information, contact information. Make sure that they can find you and call you. And your email address, once they've connected to you, should be public. It should be a, You should be accessible. Phone number, if you want people to call you. Um, the way to stand out now, call people. It shocks them. And you stand out as somebody who's willing to connect. 
So um, I know this is, I, there's a lot of detail in here, but it's all really, it's really just like points of interest. So think about them as just do one at a time or two at a time, right? So the next thing, look at your endorsement section. There's a maximum of 50. Make sure that the right skills are listed on top and you can move them around now, which is awesome because it used to be that the more endorsements you had for certain skills, that was higher. Now you can move them around. Make sure you make sure, make sure that the ones that you want public or first seen are the ones on top, right? So when you're writing, use your brand's language okay. and use the language of the reader. And if those two don't match, then you have a, band, a brand conflict. You have a, a conflict with what you do for a living. In fact, that's what drove me to do with this, what I'm doing here, is I realized that to be in corporate, I had to say what they needed me to say. And I'm not really that good at it. So now I'm, I am refocusing my brand to be more colorful, to be more engaging, to get out of the box, which is pretty fun. So use your brand's language, but also use the language of the reader and make sure it's yours and that matches. Uh, know that you won't reach people who um, don't match both your brand and the hiring manager, right? Make sure that you're okay. It's, you're going to reach enough people you post something, you're going to get 20% of your group, your contacts. 20% of your contacts will see something that you post. That's a lot of people. You can't call them in 10 minutes, whereas you can post something in 10 minutes. So, okay, so add videos or links. To, um, use the features uh, portfolio that uh, highlights your work. Oh, use the, the features. Use the features. Portfolios, if that highlights your work. If your work is visual, make sure that, that you have pictures in there, images. Make sure that your brand is showing. Um, and the most important thing is read. So it takes time to write it. It takes a long time to write it. But then read what you wrote out loud, and that takes more time. So if you want to, to get what you need or what you're asking for, if you really want this to work, then take time for it. Invest that time. And I want to make sure that we have questions. Please ask questions if you want to ask questions. Um, and then we'll move on to, oh, I see this is a different, show. okay. So I want to also caution you on, be wary, beware of the story that you tell. Like if you think, oh, I haven't finished school yet. I can't do that because I haven't finished school yet. If you've taken any classes at the college level, write it in there. Um, I went to the University of Wisconsin, so naturally that's what I put. Um, uh, bachelor's of Science coursework estimate, and if if you're still in school, just write coursework. And if if you're in school still, then write estimated completion date, 2016, 2025, whatever. But just put it in there because that tells me, a, you've had coursework. B you're still working on it. So what if it takes you forever? So what? Okay, so I I finished, I haven't finished school, turns into a positive. So someone told me, I can't shake my administrative assistant history. Well, guess what? I am passionate about developing processes and systems for greatest success for a team, organization, project, or person. If anyone's worked with uh, an administrative assistant for a top level person. Um, the, they, they have huge responsibility. Confidentiality. Not everyone can do that. Um, so, confidentiality, projects, keeping somebody organized, making things happen on the, on the fly, changing everything around scheduling, that is that is all logistics. So just because you can't shake your administrative assistant history means that you can't change, that you have you can't shake it. Stop talking about it, right? Put it in a position where you actually have that superpower uh, pose with your hands on your hips. Go go for it, right? And then think about what did you really do? 
You made things happen, right? Okay, so another point is I don't have to pay any client. Well, guess what? I work with, and then describe your ideal client. So I work with creative senior leaders who want to get promoted because I am passionate about people loving what they do and talking about what they do in a really positive way. And then talk about your reasoning, the reasoning behind your career change or your job change or whatever. And mostly give them a whiff of what's in it for them because people really care about themselves. Okay. Okay, so some some people have told me I took a pay cut for this job, but to be to be a part of this company. Well, who cares? You made a decision around that. The fact is, you made a conscious decision to go work for that company. So you get what you get from them. Make it leverage this as a learning opportunity. So you might say, um, basically, I, I took this step to really learn as much as I could about supply chain management. Or I took this job to learn as much as I could about how to leverage a graphic approach to whatever. Whatever it is that you're leveraging, you are the strategic mind behind your move. What is it? Right? So, um, let's see. Leveraging this is a complete my degree and really start to form the next step in my career. Doesn't that tell a much better story? Yeah. Okay, so remember, remember the superhero stance. Anytime that you think these thoughts or whatever your little gremlin thought is, and I don't mean gremlin because uh, little because it, this, sometimes they take you and stop you. But do the superhero stance. Stand with your, your head held high, your shoulders back, your hands on your hips and say, University of Wisconsin, whatever, right? Do it. Nobody can see you unless you work in the same room as your husband. So um, anyway, do it. Okay, so the bonus, bonus daily 10-point check. So post something daily. Remember, 20% of your contacts see it. Go in. Once you've got your profile done, do these, right? Look at the news section. Find it. Find an article. Share it. Comment, add value. Answer emails promptly because there, nobody cares about something that happened two days ago, four days ago. Touch it. Get it done with. Endorse someone for something. Endorse them because that's the easiest thing you can do. Write a recommendation, right? Okay, so triage offers to link. So think about, and it really bugs me that the, the dots don't line up, but that's okay. Okay, so are they in your target market? Who do you want to talk to? Are they someone who can reach? Um, do they serve a purpose to you? This is where you get to be selfish. Because this is your profile, your connections. This is important to you. You get to decide. Do they connect you with people you might want to meet? You know, there's a ton of recruiters on here. So uh, they, they, they connect to each other, but they also are like one more point of um, connection. What, six degrees of separation? One degree of separation. They just get you that much closer, okay? Connect with people who have work you want. Ask them how they did it, right? Narrow the feed to your contacts and uh, respond to at least one thought. And maybe, you know what? I should probably show you this. Um, I don't think I can show you both. Um, but let's talk about that as we go through. And I'll show you what I'm, I'm talking about. Add five connections. You may know these people maximum daily. Um, th that's all you can do is add five. But you do five today, five tomorrow, five today. And eventually people will um, respond to you and add, add you back, right? And you'll grow your community. Uh, post in your groups. Make sure that you have enough groups. But, but really be active in three. Pick three, right? And then reach out to newly connected people with a thank you and some sort of offer or let me get off of coffee or maybe a coupon. I don't know if you have coupons, um, but maybe for me, it would be an audit on their profile. And pay it forward. Write recommendations for someone that, that you've worked with because that's just good for the universe. All right. So let's see. Questions. What's that? What's statement in your profile stumps you. 
What would you like to know more about today? What is your big surprise from today? And I realize that there's like a 45 second delay on this. So while you while we're waiting for um, responses, I think what I will do is I will stop sharing this and then I will um, share another screen. See if we can get to actually to um, yeah, I want to get back to, to my profile initially. And let's see. Share screen. Here's my profile. Share. Okay, so um, anything that you guys are stumped by, anything you want to uh, touch more deeply on, Let's see, where is this? Okay. All right, so I cannot do this right now, but so if I look at organizational leadership business, so um, these are my posts, right? And each time they see, each time I have 20% of this number, 1,323 people see it, right? I'm going to. To the 10 point daily check. All right, so first of all, I'm going to show you my background or my background, my summary. Thank you for visiting my LinkedIn profile since starting Sage Strategies in 2006. Um, I've worked with hundreds of clients for thousands of hours to help them get promoted, increase productivity, retain key players on the team, challenge the team, blah, 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 long, way too long. Um, dot, dot, dot. I love what I do, which stands out, right? Okay, so 20 years of operational marketing. So let's see, do I have a question? Okay, so I'm going back to this. See, see how I have a um, the summary, which is my language. I'm writing that. I want somebody to get to know me better by reading that. And then the skills section. Right. So what you're looking at is keyword searching, um, keywords that are searchable. So if somebody's looking for Myers Briggs or my MTI, MBTI, I have it both ways because I want to make sure that if somebody's looking for somebody to do a day long um, training course on Myers Briggs and use the assessment, I want them to find me. Right. So. I have those in there and then I have my this is basically right from my resume and it's a little wonky formatting but that's the way it goes so I have 17 recommendations right 15 more that you don't see it would be great to be able to change those around so this is this is my experience at Northrop again I have two recommendations I have one more from Disney Right, long time. Been in business a long time. So, um, volunteer experience, causes. What do I stand for? I'm an alumni board member. I'm a homeward deployed professional coach. Opportunities I'm looking for. Um, causes I care about. Organizations. Let's see. Oh, here's the um, skills. Right, leadership development. Ninety nine percent. Organizational development. So followers, so the question comes in, um, oh, let's see, where is that? So how do you get followers? So basically what you do is let's just, let's just look at this. Okay. So. So if I highlight this area, right? I don't know if you can see this, but this is the two. It's uh, on the upper right hand corner, right next to my face. Um, it shows two, right? So we have two invitations. And Kathy Tuggle, let's see, let's talk about Kathy because I've had her in my inbox for too long. So let's talk about this. 
and it's slow because I'm on webinar jam. Um, okay, so what I want to know is why does she want to talk to me? She's an associate insurance compliance officer, California Department of Insurance. Okay, I don't really know who she is, but I don't really know what she's interested in. So <clears throat> connections. So let me go to connections. And this is not actually answering your question. Um, but here's one place where you can actually look, right? Okay, so these are events. Um, these are people I've recently talked to. Let's see. Find, add connections. Do you see where this is? Connections is the third point on the left. Add connections. Let's see what that says. Because that might have suggestions. One, you have email addresses. Two, and really, I've done this. And it's um, it's fantastic, but here is where you will find suggestions. People you may know. And did you see where I was on the right hand side, the, the two, and then I went down to people may you may know, and I highlighted it. So, um, and I really I really don't add a lot of people I don't know. I have to. Um, I, I really want to make sure that I am connected to them somehow, right? Um, let's see if there's anyone that I do know. And connecting and following is very similar. I generally do this. So it's kind of interesting that it's I don't really know these people. So go through this, find somebody that you know, find somebody that you would like to know. And um, and this changes on a daily basis, right? So if you look at the home, home page, the home page comes up. Did you see where I was over here with the home on the far left side? People you may know, look here, add five people a day, right? And let's see more. And then you can also look at, hey, there's Tracy. And then you can look at, um, check your contacts, let's see, connections. Sorry, this is actually quite slow. Okay, so it's still working on opening, right? So I want I want all contacts. So unfortunately, this is much slower than if, if we weren't on air. Um, but basically what you can do here is go into people that you I identified as your key contact, your key um, ideal connection, the person you want to talk to, the person you want to reach, whether that's a hiring manager, whether it's the VP of marketing, whether it is the um, you know, the king of all um, infomercials, whether it's whatever, whatever you're looking for, head of engineering for the big company that you want to work for. So you've identified them as a very specific target. So you want to go in and see who does you, who do your contacts know? Because they can help you connect with those people. And when they connect, when you see somebody that you want to connect with, that somebody you know connects, pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, you know, I don't know how well you know this person, but I would love to connect with them. And you can also use the search. And I'm not sure this is going to go very much faster, but I want to make sure that um, it can show something.
So the question is, can you do multiple actions? Should we do use LinkedIn for only one identity at a time? Um, the challenge on that is that if they're completely different, you might have um, a problem being clear on who you are. And if you're confused, they're confused. But you know, there's got to be some way where you're maybe um, you want to teach, but you want to be a coach. So to me, those are similar. And the probably your why, why you want to do what you're doing is the same. So it's part of your brand, figure out what, what drives you to do that and talk about that. And then talk about what is, what is, um, it's not going to let me do much here, is it? So I'm sorry that we don't have the technology to, um, actually get further. However, we can go back to this. And then of course, um, if you have questions, please feel free to contact me directly. The slides will be available. We have but ooh, that's um, okay, so this is me. Um, okay, so the, the point is one persona, right? But go to the base of who you really are and what you really believe in and to change the world, whatever that is. Because what we're doing is we're make, our actions change the world for someone. What is it? And talk about that and then talk about the different facets of how you do that. Because you can do, um, I can help people love what they do in a lot of different ways. One is to promote themselves. Another one is to really find out their why, right? It's not two different things, it's one. It's finding, it's helping them love, love, love what they do, right? Um, so that was the one question. The other one is how to get followers. And that is, you know, go in the search, import your, import your contacts, because that's going to extend your reach dramatically. So whether it's Yahoo or it's Gmail or whatever your email contact list is, start there. And then add five people at a time. And it's remarkably powerful how over time that number just grows incrementally. So we're up against the hour. It's five. It's eleven fifty-seven, and I um, I want to thank you again. Please feel free to reach out to me for a free, um, free, uh, complimentary, whatever you say, a freebie, um, a profile audit. Um, you're welcome to do that, and uh, send me an email, and we'll set that up. It'll take about thirty minutes, and we can figure out what some some hot topics that you can do right away. Again, I want to thank you all for being here today. And um, please, this will be, you will be sent this, these slides and have access to the um, uh, course, the webinar for about, mm, I think it's uh, 10 days. And then after that, it will be, it's actually going to be on YouTube shortly. So you will be, you'll be able to access this and the slides will be up on SlideShare. So let me know if you have any problems doing that. Um, info at sageforchange.com. And thank you again.